This is the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio 2, and I've been using it as my main editing device for about five or six months now. And I'm not too sure what all the reviews were saying about this guy at launch, but I'm somebody that likes to use the device for a long period of time before I give my thoughts on it. Now, prior to using this as my main editing device, I was coming from MacBooks, and as somebody who didn't really believe in the whole three-in-one thing, I'm quite presently surprised with just how good this laptop is. Now, that being said, there are definitely some negatives and just strange quirks about this device right here. So if you're someone who's interested and potentially picking this up, you might want to stick around. Now, over the last five or six months, I've done my best to kind of use this device in as many scenarios and situations as I could think of. So whether that's computing outdoors, indoors, at a cafe, whatever the case is, I've done it all. So the spec that I'm using is the 13th gen Intel Core i7 with 64 gigs of memory, one terabyte of storage, and the GeForce RTX 4060. So looking at the design of the Laptop Studio 2, no matter which spec you get, it is a very premium design. When you pick this thing up, it feels nice and chunky and everything feels extremely premium. If you compare the chassis of the Studio One and the Studio Two, you'll notice that on the Studio One, it was a much more rough finish, whereas on the Studio Two, you're still getting that anodized aluminum in the platinum colorway. However, it's a much smoother, more glossy finish. And as I said, this guy is pretty chunky, so depending on which configuration you buy, the weight of it is gonna be 1.89 or 1.99 kilograms. So continuing with the design, this is where we get into one of the first quirks or things that I don't really like about this laptop, and that is the I.O. So this laptop is only going to net you two USB-C ports with 4.0 connectivity and Thunderbolt, one micro SD card reader for whatever reason, your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and the Surface Connect port that's used for charging. And honestly, the decision to go with micro SD really baffles me because this is supposed to be a device that's geared towards creators. And anyone that's used a camera knows that the majority of the cameras that we use require SD cards. So it would have made more sense for this to have an SD reader. The only time that I benefit from that micro SD is when I'm taking footage off of my DJI Osmo Pocket 3. But anyhow, let's move on to something that I really do like, and that is the display. With this being a three-in-one laptop, you're obviously gonna be using this in a laptop orientation. But then on top of that, you have this little tented mode where I tend to use it mostly when I'm watching content, whether I'm in the kitchen or in the car, whatever the case is. It's really nice to have the keyboard be covered up by the screen and give you this really pleasant viewing angle. I personally love it. And then the third mode is the tablet mode, which I don't really use as much, but obviously you're going to want to have a really nice and responsive screen because you're able to use it in so many different orientations. This is a 14.4 inch screen with a resolution of 2400 by 1600, giving you 200 PPI. It has a refresh rate of 120 Hertz. It is also a touchscreen and uses Corning Gorilla Glass 5. And honestly, having the touchscreen is a really nice touch. And as someone who doesn't really care for touchscreens on laptops, I find that I use this one a lot. I don't know what the actual nit value of this screen is, but I find whether I'm using it indoors or outdoors, I've never had issues with seeing the screen. It is a glossy screen, so at times you're gonna have that glare, but at the end of the day, you're probably not gonna be outside editing or answering emails for you know an hour at a time, eventually you're gonna be going back inside. So it's enough for those short bursts where you're stuck outside, you really need to get something done. But overall, that glossiness of the screen means that you're gonna wanna use this more so indoors. As far as the camera goes, this is what it looks like. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a webcam on a laptop. So if you were expecting anything incredible, unfortunately, this is the best that you're gonna get. It's a full HD 1080p webcam and has all the fancy Windows 11 features like auto framing, eye contact, which I think is extremely creepy, and also the background blur. One thing I really do like about this webcam is that you're able to use Windows Hello 2.0, which means that instead of typing in a password or using a fingerprint, you're able to log into the laptop using face authentication. As far as the color accuracy goes, like I've said, I previously edited all of my content on a Mac and then airdropped everything over to my phone when I was posting on social media media or posting straight to YouTube. And honestly, I don't really see any difference between when I'm editing in DaVinci Resolve on this and when I'm editing on a Mac. I think all the colors are consistent. So I'm generally pleased with the color accuracy of this display. Now, moving on to the keyboard and the touchpad, and sorry for constantly bringing up MacBooks. I just find that on the Macs, that was the most pleasant typing experience for me. So I'm really excited about just how close the typing experience is on the Laptop Studio 2. And even the Laptop Studio 1 was really good. If I put these two laptops side by side, for whatever reason, I did enjoy the Laptop Studio 1's typing experience more than I did on the 2. And I think it just has something to do with the switches that were used. So these ones are a lot more clicky and kind of have 
just a pitch that I don't like versus these ones have that nice chonky sound and just feels really, really smooth, like really buttery while you're typing. This one isn't very far off. It's just there's a marked difference between the two of them. Now, as for the trackpad, it's very responsive. It's very large. I think they did a fantastic job with this. I've had no issues at all when it comes to editing and just the accuracy of fine movements, whether it's one or two fingers that you have on the touchpad at a time. I think anybody that uses this touchpad will be pleased with it. So there's really not much else to say about that. Now, moving on to the speakers, they're quad omnisonic speakers with Dolby Atmos. And I mean, they're fine. I'm the type to usually wear headphones when I'm editing or listening to music from my laptop anyways, or I just use the edifier speaker that's beside me. So I don't really go crazy with the overall speakers on this guy here. So it's obviously hard to let you experience the speakers through video like this, but I'll do my best to give you an example. Moving on to the performance, as you'd expect with this being the highest configuration that Microsoft sells. Again, you've got the 13th gen Intel Core i7, 64 gigs of memory, one terabyte of storage and the GeForce RTX 4060. On paper, those all sound very good and I'm happy to say that it does actually translate into good performance. So as you can imagine, I film my videos in 4K 10-bit color. I have absolutely zero issues on the timeline when it comes to editing, color grading, Photoshop, Lightroom, whatever the case is, this does handle everything pretty well. There are times that I'm surprised that it doesn't handle it a little bit better because like I said, on paper, everything does seem to be outstanding. But overall, if this happens to be the spec that you go for because you have the same or similar workflow to myself, then you're definitely going to be happy with the overall performance. But if you're thinking that those specs are good for gaming, it is kind of hit or miss. So in my humble opinion, if you're buying this as a gaming laptop, thinking that you're going to be able to download the latest PC games and run everything super smooth, that's not really the case. For me personally, I use Game Pass. So all the games that I play, I use my Xbox controller connected to the laptop and I have zero issues when it comes to that. But if you're gonna jump on Fortnite or something like that and think that you can set everything to the ultra settings, you're not gonna be able to. I mean, you can, but your frame rate is not gonna be what you expect it to be. If you're running on medium or something like that, then you'll be much happier. You'll get you know, your 100 FPS, whatever the case is. But for the majority of games, um, this just isn't going to be enough. You're going to want to buy a dedicated gaming laptop. But again, if you're someone that runs Game Pass as I do, and I mean, I've spent 105 hours in the last little bit on Monster Hunter World, um, you're definitely going to be happy. There's no issues at all. Now, moving on to the battery life, and this is one of the areas that disappoints me the most. If you look up on Microsoft's website, and there goes my battery right now, actually. Uh, your battery is low. You should plug in your device. It was at 20% when I started recording. I just have this screen on and it's like draining my battery like crazy right now. But anyways, on Microsoft's website, it says that this is rated for 16 to 18 hours of battery life during typical device usage. I don't know what that means. I suspect it means when you're scrolling the internet or like watching a couple of YouTube videos, whatever the case is, you're apparently supposed to get 16 to 18 hours. I've personally never seen that. I've personally never seen anything close to that. My use case might be different than most people. I'm watching videos, I'm gaming and I'm editing and I do a lot of it off the power cord. So if I were to take this video that I'm recording right now and start editing it in DaVinci without the power plugged in, I would go from probably 100 to battery saver mode in like an hour, no lie. Like this battery drains so, so quickly. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's me. Maybe something that I'm doing isn't optimized. Um, but again, if you're someone that's going to be using this computer where majority of the time you're going to be plugged in because one, that gives you the best performance anyways. And two, not many people are editing outside or away from an outlet because that's just the nature of content creation. Yeah, for whatever reason, I'm not getting that battery life that they're talking about. And the standby battery, by that I mean, if you were to just close the lid and leave this laptop and go about your business for four or five days, when you come back, it is surely gonna be dead. I don't know, again, if there's some setting that I'm not familiar with in Windows 11, but when I do the same thing with my MacBooks, like close the lid and leave and go on vacation for two weeks and come back and still have juice, 
with this guy, like, I don't know, there's just something up with, with the battery here. So just be wary of that if you're planning to buy the Surface Laptop Studio 2. All that being said though, this is a fantastic device. I do absolutely love it. Like I said, my favorite mode to use it in is the tented kind of content mode where that magnet just connects. Everything looks nice. You still have access to the touchpad. It has a beautiful screen. The speakers sound good. So you're just able to use it for pretty much whatever. When I'm on the go and I want to get some gaming in, I can jump on Game Pass and start right where I left off from my Xbox. Like I absolutely love that. And I love that the performance when using Game Pass does not hitch at all. And then finally, just having a dedicated editing device that is powerful enough and has enough memory to do all the things that I need to do in my opinion, makes this the best three in one that I've ever personally used and currently my favorite Windows 11 laptop right now. But yeah, that's pretty much it for me. If you made it this far, please do drop two hearts down in the comments so that I can thank you personally. Much love as always, throwing up two of them and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.